Welcome back in live to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We're going on with our week four picks. We skipped week three. We actually recorded an episode, but it wasn't released. We've been doing all right lately. Um, there are a few picks that we love on week four. And without further ado, we're just going to jump right in it. Dill, what's your best pick you got for week four? Favorite pick on the board was I love UCLA to cover Stanford four and a half points. Uh, Stanford's really, really bad. Like, I don't care that they beat USC, who is also really, really bad. So it's, to me, I think that UCLA is going to far outmatch them athletically. And, and I just, I don't see how Stanford deals with that athleticism because I think it is going to look like night and day. So I, I love that. I think they should be like at least a touchdown favorite. Uh, so the cover set four and a half seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, I think that's also one of those games. I didn't put it on my list, but I like the pick. The 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 UCLA is going to put points up, and so them covering four and a half five points um, isn't is really not that much. Very doable for them. Um, yeah, no, I, I I don't know. I Stanford's just they stink. So yeah, I, don't, USC, I, don't I think they, that's an overreaction. Yeah, uh, I think my favorite pick is. I like – there's three picks I like. I'll give my first one right now. Missouri minus two going into Boston College. Boss, I'll, call, I'll pull up the box door of Boston College's last game against Temple. Phil Yurkovich went down with an injury um, to, uh, during the UMass game. And so they're starting a quarterback, Dennis Grossell. He went five of 13 for 34 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He completed way less than 50% of his balls and only threw for 34 yards. Played the whole game, threw one touchdown, one pick against Temple, who stinks. The The only thing I will caution you is I know that Jerkovic is out, but does this Grostel guy, like, given a week of practice, does he have talent? or He had a, he had a week of practice, and he's still stuck against Temple. Oh, he uh, jerk back did he came in, in he, that he game. Came in UMass. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, well that's gross. And he was he was eleven of fourteen for two hundred yards against UMass, but UMass is is the worst team in like division like FBS football. So oh, that's not an exaggeration. I mean, in oh, Missouri, yeah. I don't. And it's again, this isn't a pick that like I love Missouri. Um, I don't. I think they got to. Missouri was pretty good though last year. Like they fought yeah, with. Right. They fought Georgia like they fought some teams. Honestly, they weren't bad. Yeah, they they almost beat Kentucky in in uh, Lexington, which I like. Connor Connor Bay's like played well through for four touchdowns, three hundred yards against Kentucky. Played a decent Central Michigan team too. Um, I think he threw he, yeah, he threw for two fifty seven, two interception or two touchdowns. Like I I think. As a pick em, I mean, the line's minus 125 on the money line, minus two uh, spread. I th- I have a hard time seeing Missouri uh, losing this game with Boston College really not having a, an air attack at all. Yeah, and Drakovac is the guy. He did so much for them. He's good. Or he he's does really good. so much for them. Um, yeah, I do too. A couple of years ago, this wouldn't have hurt them that bad. Uh, they'd just give it, to, give it to A.J. Dillon and – they would have been fine, but they don't have that um, smothering, I would describe it as rushing attack this year. It's more been an arid, more relying on Phil Yurkovic. And without him, uh, I, I struggled to see them just kind of imposing their will. And so you're getting a decent line. Uh, Missouri coming in is pretty much a pick them. And, and I like I like them to be Boston College. It's not like they're going in and playing that crazy of an environment either. Boston no, that's a, that's a sleepy kind of snooze, home kind field. Of snooze, uh, advantage, so I think it's a good pick. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, I, you know Mizzou's going to have some talent, so them, them facing a backup who's played horrible, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. And, again, like they don't have the A.J. Dillon running game that they've had, so it's like they can't. Paul, like, yeah, if they had A.J. Dillon in, in that offensive line with, like, legit draft picks, sure, but that doesn't seem to be what that team is anymore. They they have moved to a bit more of a spread with Yerkebeck, and yeah, I don't see I don't see how they can replace him, is, I guess, the end of the day. He's by far the well, best Well, I mean, I would have been 
open to it if Dennis Grossell just hasn't looked horrible. Like, they yeah. pretty much have no confidence. You threw 13 balls, you completed five of them for 34 yards last game. Yeah, against, Temple, against a very weak Temple team. Um, yep. I think it's a good pick. No, I'm, I agree with that. Uh, uh, moving to my next pick, I think – I like Iowa State to cover seven I on, do. That's my on Baylor. And yeah. I don't like that I'm just – that I only saw favorites and that's all I want to take. But it is what I saw. I think Iowa State's getting – like their defense is good enough to pretty much shut Baylor out, I think. I mean, if, if uh, they get even remotely better play without all the turnovers from that offense, like, that game is razor tight with Iowa, and it's probably – I don't think they would have given up much more than 14 – 10 to 14 points uh, on their own. So I, I'm, I'm going to just bet on Brock Purdy. I don't – I mean, Brock Purdy is, is like, like a horrible quarterback, honestly. Like, I'm really down on his game, uh, especially when they play big teams. He just seems to not be that guy. Like, he, he – does good when Brees Hall can dominate a game, but when they take that out of his hands, uh, he's not great. But I, again, like you're taking a big step down in competition, and and I think Brees Hall is going to be a, effective against Baylor, and and he'll Purdy does generally fare okay when he plays weak teams. So I'm gonna I I like this pick to for them to cover seven. I think that's not that many points against a pretty weak Baylor team. Yeah, I don't. I think it's a good pick too, and I think again, it's a maybe an overreaction to Iowa State hasn't looked good. They, <coughs> excuse me, barely squ- squeaked out a win against UNI. Uh, obviously, looked really weak against Iowa, and then got kind of back on track against a really poor UNLV team. Baylor's not good. Baylor has not been good for a little bit now. They were horrible last year. There's really not much to get excited about this team. I think it's very reasonable to see Iowa State winning by at least two scores here. Um, if you could, maybe just buy the buy the line down to six and a half. If it if it, it's trending like it might get to six and a half, so I love it at six and a half the most. Obviously, with that hook, yeah. um, seven I think you'll be fine. And uh, this this game, I, I really Iowa State looked weak last year early, right? They lost to uh, Louisiana in that first game of the season. And then they got going. I, I have a hard time seeing this Iowa State team not really right in the ship. They got too much experience, too much talent um, against a team like Baylor. I feel like they'll cover seven quite easily. And uh, just for me, at the end of the day, their defense actually has played pretty good. I mean, their offenses look like kind of trash. But I feel like Iowa State's defense has played pretty good football throughout this season and and that's just a really good unit i mean really good defensive line that number nine incredible player McDonald. don't really know his name yeah mcdonald he's but good. uh he was he was an animal against iowa they uh, their good linebackers good. really good i'm young jake hummel um obviously mike rose is up there they got some really good players on defense who are legit nfl draft prospects yeah so yeah. i just i like what they i i just like that defensive yeah. matchup and Again, I don't love Iowa State's offense, especially not Purdy, but uh, I'm just going to assume they don't turn the ball over that much and you get your cover if that happens, I think. Okay, my next pick's Clemson minus nine and a half. We were able to get at minus nine and a half earlier this week. I think most lines are taken at minus 10 now. Uh, I think you'll be fine there. It's only a matter of time until Clemson starts blowing people yep. up. And I particularly like the matchup here. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't look very good against Georgia Tech, but NC State's a primarily like they like to run the ball. They have those two power backs. They have a very, very good offensive line. They don't really like to throw the ball much, and that's what we saw when they got down at Mississippi State. They couldn't really get back in the game because they like to play with the lead leg to run the ball. NC State can run the ball against most teams. Guess what's the team they can't run the ball against? is going to be Clemson. Clemson basically stopped Georgia's running offense. They won't have a problem stopping NC State's running offense. Um, if NC State can't run the ball, I have I have a hard time seeing Devin Leary dropping back and beating Clemson with his arm, especially with that nasty pass rush. Really, this bet really relies on DJ and in that offense figuring it out. Lynn J. Dixon, I just saw transferred on Monday, um, so they're kind of going away from that running back. And Will Shipley and Kobe Pace will kind of take that take that load. 
Um, but they, I, I, I just, I, Clemson's going to start being Clemson again soon. I'm with you. Like you get this line last year or any other year in the past five years, like that's easy money. Like Clemson, you expect them to come in and be 28 point favorites against everybody. Mm -hmm with the exception of maybe like three teams on their schedule each year. So I, I, I'm kind of with this pick, I think. Yeah, sooner or late, later they are going to go back to big boy football and and just start rolling teams like they have in the past uh, five years or so. So I, I, I like this pick too. It just seems like the line's really tight. I mean, you give a bad game to Georgia Tech and I mean, not like they lost or anything, but obviously they played horrible, but this Clemson team plays even close to what they should be. Like they'll beat them by 20. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was, that was my last, I, those were the three. Well, I had UCLA, Iowa state and Clemson. That's really the three I like. They really like. Okay. Um, I'll give you a few, <clears throat> a few picks that I'm not in love with, but I'm going to be taking because one, the game's exciting and two, I, I want to have some skin on these games. Notre Dame, Wisconsin is a game I'm very interested in. A team, teams with a very similar identity. And both teams that have been sleepy to start the season, Notre Dame has looked very far from sharp. Uh, barely, barely beaten Toledo, barely beaten Florida State. Looked a little better against Purdue, but this team, um, and it was to be expected. I think me and you kind of saw this coming earlier in the, or the, the off season. They had a lot of turnover, replacing a lot, a lot of NFL talent on both sides of the ball. And so they're kind of adjusting. That being said, a neutral site plus 190, I think Notre Dame's a great sprinkle there. I mean, we've been kind of finding some good diamond in the rough dogs. Uh, I think this could be one. Again, it's not like I love Notre Dame. It's um, generous, generous to refer to Notre Dame as a diamond in the rough. They are ranked what 18 or something. Oh, the diamond in the rough where they shouldn't they shouldn't be plus 190. That's kind of what I meant. Like I just think no, that's fair. I was just like the, the um, wording of it's a little, a little ridiculous. Yeah, but. That's fair, I guess. Um, <laughs> but I think I think it's a good pick, uh, regardless, because I like it too. I don't I think that game should be close. Wisconsin's pretty bad. Wisconsin's so. good. Um, I don't think – if Wisconsin can't run the ball like they couldn't run the ball against Penn State, Graham Mertz isn't going to be able to do it in the air. Uh, so, Agreed. I'm taking Notre Dame. It's, an, again, not a game I particularly love, but I think the value's there. I'll take it. Yeah, what else do you got? I got one more, and this, again, is kind of a homer pick, obviously being a Wake Forest fan. <laughs> we have forces plus 160 on the money line. I'd like to give you guys some of the dogs I like. I think this one's a decent one. Virginia has been impressive. Um, I don't hate the cut of Virginia, but I think if there's any team that's really, really benefited from this COVID year of eligibility, it's been Wake Forest. They got one seven-year guy. Um, more, I think four starters who are six-year guys. And then another like 10 starters who are fifth year guys. So they got a lot of experience when a lot of these top teams are kind of losing all this NFL talent, a lot of turnover. Um, Wake Forest is having just a tremendous amount of experience back. They're plus minor, they're plus 160 going into Virginia. Um, we've played Virginia well. I think we beat them last year. Wake has. So Wake's looked very, very good so far. Um, Easily beating everyone. They played Florida State last week. Handled them. Quite. Only the only issue I have is I think they're going to need to score. And I, Hartman is at times not look particularly sharp this year, and that's my only concern. Is like I wish he has played more consistently than maybe he has, and he's not obviously faced much competition. So it's like that's what I wish he'd say. seen like real sharp play i mean he's not been bad but it's like they're gonna need to score because armstrong's gonna score so yeah and i think kind of with to what you were saying like i think that is the reason why he hasn't looked that sharp is he's playing these teams that are just really weak and so it's like okay if you have a quick three and out like that's no big deal you're gonna get the ball back in a second and, and put up some numbers um 
they're running the ball. The, this is the best I've seen Wake Forest run the ball. Christian Bale Smith is about – obviously, we'd love to have Kenneth Walker. But Christian Bale Smith's about as complete of a back as we've had, running the ball extremely well between the tackles, um, also having some, some lead ability to make people miss in the open field. Uh, this is the best Wake Forest team I've seen in, in the last five years, I, I truly think, at least from a talent standpoint. And, again – it's a Friday night. Like if you're if you're looking to get some action on the game, I think Wake Forest plus one sixty is a great take. Yeah, no, that's it's a fair pick. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of with you. I don't. To me, I don't love it. I just yeah, think that's fair. I think Wake has struggled in these big shootout games generally. Quite honestly, now that Wake has, I think the losses they've had, we've had. If they're some- giving up thirty plus points. Like that's not where Wake does a great job, honestly. Yeah, and, and again, I think it's a little bit because their tempo, they play super fast, and when the ball starts rolling the other way on them, like, it starts rolling it fast. Gets out of hand, so. yeah. We've had that where it's like they score a touchdown, and we go three and out in 30 seconds. Like, That's UNC like last game. year stands out to me as Louisville two, two, two or three years ago. That one really hurt. We were top 20, I believe, at the time. A decent yeah, but just those fast-paced shootouts, like, yeah, I don't know. I and I, I can see this game being a little bit of that because Virginia, they have been scoring. I mean, All right. granted, I don't, I don't have a ton of faith that they're like a real high-powered offense. Like they've played bad teams a little bit. So, okay, before before we uh, close out the show, there's one other game we should just talk about. We will do a preview on this game uh, before the game, but uh, Arkansas, Texas A&M, Texas A&M, I should say, going into Arkansas. What do you think about that game? We will say, like, we both just kind of couldn't find a great bet for this game. But what do you think about the game? What do you think about the line? Seem, I mean, I don't want to say too much because obviously we are going to be covering this again. And, and, uh, but it, why do you it think seems it? fair. It seems fair to me. Like, Arkansas's yeah. offense really doesn't strike me as being particularly good. Uh, yeah, they, they they weren't really moving the ball that well on Texas. It was like Texas was turning the ball over in the first half and in making, like, Texas mistakes. So they weren't, like, chewing them up, though, even though the score was pretty lopsided for the first half. But uh, at the same time, like, how can you trust betting on Zach Calzada? Like, he – God, he looks so bad against – uh. Colorado and I will give it like when you have the week of preparation as the starter I think generally that's really helpful so he didn't have that obvious he was coming in cold but uh yeah I mean it's I don't I don't I want to say like I want to take Arkansas just because I like it almost gets the feeling that like Maybe they're turning a corner and, and take advantage of a Texas A&M team that's down a starting quarterback. But it's hard for me to – I think Texas a and is going to really put the clamps on them on defense, so it's hard to – That's hard to really pick. Like I kind of, if I were to put out a pick, it would be just Arkansas money line. I think obviously in Fayetteville it's going to be bumping. Um, this is this is an exciting time to be an Arkansas Razorback fan with a, a team with a lot of traditions, but so 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 bad. Sam Pittman's got this team going in the other direction, in the right direction, I should say. Texas A and M's kind of the opposite, where not the opposite, but basically this quarterback situation is just not looking good. Zach Calzada looked horrible against Colorado. What they'll said is true. Um, and we, we saw him play a, a better brand of football against UNLV, but that's not really saying much. And so Zach Calzada looks like the old Zach Calzada, the Colorado game. I think Arkansas can very easily win this game. That being said, Dale, you're right. Texas A&M has like the best defense in the country next to kind of Georgia. Um, this defense is, is from, from the defensive line to the back end. Very, very talented. Multiple All-Americans, multiple NFL uh, talent. So it's it's just a hard one to pick. It's really it's what you're really picking is can Zach Calzada put up points um, against a, an Arkansas yeah. defense that's solid and has some guys I like. Bumper Pool. Um, they just do a really good job stopping the run. So it's yeah. like 
They have to throw. It's going to be in Zach Calzada's hands. Frankly, A and M hasn't run the ball either, so it's like it's not. It's weird. I don't know. So there's pretty much what we're. I guess what we're saying in short is that we don't love the pick. There's not the best value. Um, Having said that, I will be. I will be. I will finalize a pick for the next probably yeah, for, preview. For a like you, preview, we will have a pick for you guys that we think you is need best. to have action on it because it is the best. It's game a great game. Week. It's going to be a fun game. And again, I, I as a Texas A and M fan from the start of the season, kind of one of the teams, them Georgia, those are kind of kind of the teams I really like coming into this season. I hope Texas A and M can squeak by and just get healthy. Hands King back because I think. Team is really good if Hans King can be there, and if they can just get good quarterback play because they have really good players around the quarterback. Yeah. So I'm hoping they can squeak by. I think, but yeah, we'll be re- we'll be reviewing this game or previewing it. I should say it's going to be a good one. Um, I got to get a couple more games of film in on Arkansas. I've watched a bunch of Texas A&M, but we look forward to sharing that with you guys. Um, once again, thank you guys for tuning in. I think we gave you all our picks that we like. We'll put them down in the comment section so you guys can read through them. We like this slate. We'll about to stack some money up this Saturday. So you guys uh, stay tuned. We'll talk to you all later. Peace.